pleased to have Chris Collinsworth back on here. How are you doing, Chris? I'm good, Rich. Could we rewind just a bit, the end with you and Dan? Sure. And, uh, you're going to take off and all that stuff. Can we just do that for sure. clarification? Sure. Uh, the, what, taking off shirts and pants and things of that nature? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Uh, apparently, do, do we, what, what happened? You guys took your shirts off yes. one time with okay, Dan? So, what happened? Uh, at the All-Star game... I don't uh, know, if, by the way, Chris, you didn't really want to know, right? You oh, just used that sorry. as just a, some, something humorous maybe to start our interview? Is that the way that works? Yeah. No, I really don't care. <laughs> 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 yeah, I see, explain. I knew that. I, 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 see, I, I knew that. I, I, I sensed it, and yeah. you know, I didn't want you to go down that road if Chris didn't really. I'll care. tweet at you about it, Chris. There you go. There yeah, you. at uh, at uh, at Collinsworth PFF. Right, that's the way we work. Correct. Something like. That. Okay, very good. <laughs> what what number Super Bowl is this for you broadcasting, Chris? What number is that? Um, the, the being the color analyst, this is the fifth, and this is the first one without Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. Is though. that right? No kidding. So he's your first, if I'm not mistaken. Were you in the booth with Fox for Eagles yeah. and and Patriots? Right, I I remember that one. Correct. Jacksonville. The coldest day in the history of Jacksonville. Yes, we were there. I remember that. That was our first. That was our first full year of NFL Network covering something from start to finish. Because we came on the year the year before, and it was Patriots and um, and uh, Panthers, and then the, the the Patriots completed the back to back right there in Jacksonville. So that was one yeah. for you. This is now five. It's really amazing when you think about it. And now, you know, Tom announcing his retirement, and it's just the whole full circle part of it. And and we actually did the last game in, in Tampa, and. Didn't didn't know it, you know. Nobody knew it at the time. So, um, yeah, it's it's amazing. And now, now here come the Cincinnati Bengals to take their place. So, who? How do you figure that? That is pretty amazing, no question about that. Chris Collinsworth here on the Rich Eisen Show. NetSuite by Oracle is a sponsor of the Rich Eisen Show. If you're ready to upgrade, go to netsuite.com slash rich. Our terrestrial radio audience is back here, and Chris Collinsworth is on the Rich Eisen Show. So, Chris, how wild is it for you that you're calling a Super Bowl and the Cincinnati Bengals are in it? Walk me through that one Uh, for you. Bizarre on every level. On every level, I, I can remember watching uh, the Evan McPherson kick go through and going, "Oh my goodness, <laughs> I am going to be calling a Cincinnati Bengals Super Bowl." And you know, and you know what goes with that too, right? You know, you're going to get, "Oh, he's so biased for," or "Why <laughs> does he hate the Bengals?" And you, you know, it's going to be one of those kind of days. But I'm still so excited to be there. I, I, I would have bought a ticket. I would have paid any amount of money to have a ticket to go watch this game. And, and I get to sit in the best seat in the house and, and next to Al and just enjoy it. So, um, you know, it, it, you, it's, it's a little daunting in that you know you, you've got to call it. You know, you've got to don't think a lot between what you see and what you say. And there will be some wounded feelings at the end of it, I'm sure. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited. I'm happy for the franchise. It's been a long time. Um, but mostly I'm happy for the, the city of Cincinnati. You know, I mean, when a Midwestern city gets a Super Bowl and the world's attention comes down on a place like Cincinnati or Kansas City or we're at Indianapolis or whatever you want to say, you know, it, it, it's just different. I mean, in L.A., it's great. They're excited. Uh, but the Grammys are coming up or the Academy Awards are coming up or the Lakers are coming up. And yet for the city of Cincinnati, it is just all encompassing. The city is orange and all the buildings are lit up here. And it's, there's just a, a real collective excitement going on. And the interesting thing is, uh, I'm, I'm just going through my head here, because the Bengals are usually the team you flex out of. Um, when was the last time you called a Bengals game, Chris? It has been a while. I was trying to figure that out as well. Um, and I, 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 maybe 17, something like that. Maybe. But Rich, the strangest thing is, because you know, we've done, what I think, three Rams games this year, mm-hmm. uh, including the playoff win over Tampa. But how much more I knew about the Rams 
than I knew about the Bengals. You know, I'm always, I've got the, the Bengals game on and, you know, it's one of many that I'm trying to watch because you're also trying to watch, you know, whatever the big game is and you're trying to watch whichever teams you're going to do next week. And, you know, you get all that going on on a, on a Sunday afternoon. But on Monday of last week, I said, I'm just going to start from scratch. I literally went through every one of their games. I watched all the defensive guys. I watched all the offensive throws and 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 plays that Joe Burrow and these receivers had made. And I, but it was enlightening for me to see just how exciting this team is. I mean, these are playmakers. If, if we come out of this game and the Bengals have won the football game, mm-hmm. they are the new Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, they just are. These are playmakers that make exciting plays, that have a young quarterback, that have that are the new darlings of the NFL. If they lose, they're an up-and-coming team, and it's great, and the Rams deserve it and all that sort of stuff. But if the Bengals win, that's quite the story. Well, if the Bengals win, then, then Joe Burrow, uh, as maybe the next Brady, will really leave the station because of year two and how talented he is and how – his career has begun or an ascendancy similar to Kurt Warner's. And I know that that's in theaters near you right now, but I mean, kid from Athens, Ohio, who gets his shot in LSU has one of the greatest seasons, if not the greatest season in the history of college quarterbacking first overall pick that nobody saw coming right until he had that season in LSU. And then two years later, he wins the Super Bowl for the Bengals. I don't, I can't, I don't know how you can, compare that ascendancy with anybody, and that is on the line on Sunday when you're broadcast. And the other thing that's kind of fun about it is that he couldn't even get on the field at Ohio State, right? I mean, that's step one. When he first went to LSU, it was like, okay, whatever. <clears throat> and then it just took off, and, and it's so amazing that a team that Admittedly, I mean, they'll openly talk about that we knew we needed offensive line help here. And yet maybe because of the relationship, maybe because they're trying to build around a quarterback, who knows? But Joe Burrow clearly wanted <clears throat> his guy. Uh, that, that, I mean, he lit the world on fire with Jamar Chase. I mean, they were just a dominant team in the dominant conference of the SEC uh, maybe one of the best college football teams we've ever seen. And and now they're coming to the NFL, and it's almost like, well, we won in high school. We won in college. I won the Heisman Trophy. Why wouldn't I win the Super Bowl <laughs> That's right. in my second year? Oh, by the way, coming off of major, major right. knee reconstruction, and some of my runs were the biggest plays in the game in the championship game. Chris Collinsworth here on the Rich Eisen Show. Um, You know, all that said, as we've just said about Joe Burrow, uh, Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Leonard Floyd, rest of this defense can make Joe's nine sack win over Tennessee like a day at the beach, right? Like a pillow fight, I would imagine. How do you see this playing out, that dynamic on Sunday, Chris? I mean, that's it. I think that's it uh, in a nutshell, and maybe to narrow it down even a little bit more, the right guard position, uh, Hakeem Adeniji and Jackson Carmen rotated in there at the right guard position. Isaiah Prince filling in for Riley Reeves really did a pretty good job in the game. But, you know, the Rams and what they like to do with some of those overload looks really is going to put a lot of pressure on either guard. So, you'll see Von Miller out wide. You'll see Aaron Donald out uh, basically looking like a defensive end. And then you'll see Greg Gaines to that same side. But what that does is it holds that center in place there. And then you've got Aaron Donald with about a five-yard run at your guard. And you've got Von Miller with about a five-yard run at your tackle. So as a quarterback, you better get that thing out of there about as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, because even if they just go straight bull rush, we've seen time after time those two guys have the ability to basically throw your offensive lineman at the quarterback. That's basically it, right? I mean, obviously Stafford, the crazy thing is how well he has been placing. And I don't mean that by crazy. I'm just saying the, the, the narrative about when he was acquired by the Rams 
from Detroit was, can he do it? Uh, you know, we've never seen him do it. Is it the Lions? Is it him? Is it a combination of both? And he's, you know, completely flipped, flipped his, his playoff record from 0-3 now to this year 3-0. and And even in that crazy game in Tampa, if I had told you there would be four turnovers by the Rams on that day, you know, many people would say, well, how many by Stafford? He made every play, including the throw to Cup at the end after it seemed that all was now tied but potentially lost. He's been remarkable these playoffs, yeah, well, Chris. Yeah, on the love of the game pass, right? Because Cooper Cup is just the clear-out guy. Uh, but with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know there's a good chance that Todd Bowles is going to throw a blitz at you at any given time, and yet there they were, and that pass was incredible. I mean, it was incredible. You are under the ultimate pressure. Uh, Tom Brady has just brought his team all the way back. Yeah. Were we looking at the Atlanta Falcons kind of come back one more time here uh, for this team to go on to the championship game? And yet here they are basically getting the ball with under a minute, whatever it was, 40 seconds and two passes to uh, Cooper Cup down the field, kick the game winner and walk off. Uh, That was the heck of a statement right there. I mean, it really was because – When that momentum shifts like that, the way that it did on Kansas City in that game a week ago, it is hard to get it back together. It is just hard. And with two throws, Matthew Stafford did what everybody was questioning whether or not he could do. And how about Tom Brady's last snap of his career as a touchdown handoff to uh, Leonard Fournette? I mean, who the hell knew at the time, right? Did you get any sense talking to him that week that this might be it? thinking about it, anything like that? Any indication different from any of the times you sat down with Brady or talked to him, Zoomed with him prior to this game, Chris? Not not the not what he said. There was a little bit of what he said, but there was a little swirl. You know what I mean? There was just a little swirl okay. that this was a little bit different. Um, and, uh, you know, I can't help but think, Rich, you, I mean, you tell me, you know this league as well as I do, you know, if, if Chris Godwin is still playing, if Antonio Brown doesn't do the strip tease, does, you know, is, is this team still in the Super Bowl? I don't know, you know, because that was a very close margin of error there. Uh, and Tristan Wurst weren't, wasn't playing at the right tackle position, arguably their best offensive lineman. So some unfortunate things down the stretch, and yet there was Tom one more time making that monster comeback, which we, I mean, it's almost getting to the point in these playoffs where you expect it. Like, what lead is safe now in these crazy playoffs? It has just been, it's been otherworldly. Well, have a great time calling it, man. You know the building, obviously, very well. Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know. It's going to be Super Bowl. It's going to be in control of the game. So I don't know if Al's going to miss the who's house Chance, I know he loves that. Um, oh, he, that's his favorite part of the whole day, yeah. <laughs> Especially when pregame warm up. That's really good. That. Oh my gosh, yeah. Al's on tomorrow's show, the uh, national treasure that is Al Michaels. Uh, have a great time calling the game, man. And again, it's just, it, it's pretty cool, right? Like, I guess I, I honestly thought when, when the Bengals made it that that was it for the Rams because I thought the Bengals had to face the 49ers in the Super Bowl, right? I did too. I did. I was like, this is not happening. And it was. It was happening. And then they, you know, the Niners had the big lead, too. I was like, oh, my gosh. Right. You'd see all that coming back at you. And I'm sure they've got everything set up with your records and Jamar Chases for, for the broadcast. I can't wait to see all that, Chris. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's, that was so funny. Mike Brown hit me with that the other day about what great receivers we've had in Cincinnati. And mm-hmm. da, 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 da. I go, Mike, just stop it. This kid is off the charts. <laughs> Don't compare him to anybody that we had on our team. This kid is just different. I, he's phenomenal. I, I really can't wait to watch him play in person. Chris, I can't wait for you calling it. Uh, thanks for the time. Enjoy the week. We'll see you out here in L.A., man. Thanks for the call. I'd like to talk to you. You're the best. That's Chris Collinsworth. He literally is the best um, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 